Responsibility for organizing practice is mostly delegated to the students. So when they come in in the morning, they come in about an hour ahead of the first drill and they take the schedule that's been prepared for them and they begin to organize. They've got to get batteries and camera bags, format P2 cards, check to make sure that they have rain gear for everything in case we get bad weather. They check the schedule to see what's going on and ask questions if they have any questions about the drills that we're running in practice. When we get out to the field an hour before practice, the students take the cameras and the tripods up to the sideline tower. It's about three stories tall. And then also the end zone will go up into a lift, which is 65 feet. One of our mottos is to hurry up and wait, because in our world, the best thing is when we're set up so far in advance, we're bored for a long time after. and We're not having to scramble around and try and figure things out at the last minute. For practice, we usually have anywhere between five to seven students. We need two on the sideline to shoot high cam for all 22 shots. We need one in the end zone to shoot an end zone tight shot, which is just the, the box, you know, lineman and the running back and the quarterback. We also have what we call a runner, and the runner's job is to get us the P2 cards so that we can be editing practice while practice is still going on. We have one student that will uh, be inside editing practice. What he does is cut up different angles for the coaches, put them in specific locations so they can open it up and view it after practice. Between each drill, each camera drops a memory card and we bring it in and we go ahead and ingest it into our editing system. The marks get cleaned up, the edit gets made, and it's up for the coaches within about five minutes after the drill's over. We have to have a lot of trust in our students because if we can't trust them to do the job, then it's not gonna get done. So we have to have a lot of trust in them just to trust that they're gonna keep us informed of what's going on to let us know when drills have changed, to let us know when they don't run drills so that we're not looking for those drills to be on certain cards. Some of our students work in both of our video areas, the coaching video area and the production video area. The guy that really does an incredible job is Bobby Blankenship. Bobby's come in, is in his third year working for us, and he's done a great job learning how to do all the coaching video jobs that are on the field, but he's also really intrinsically involved in our production area. He edits highlight videos and motivational videos for the team, for recruiting. Uh, he's really doing a lot of everything. If the team wins their game on the Saturday, we do something that's called motivational. It's a highlight of just that game to try to get them pumped up for the next game. The process is a very lengthy process. Some people take it for granted how long it takes. Long as I ever took on a motivational was 40 hours. What Bobby will do is, is he'll work with me to find a song. He'll give me some options, five or six different options. I'll take a listen. We look for songs that not only have a great beat, uh, but we want songs that have the right kind of message in the lyrics as well. Once the song is selected, we go gun-ho on starting to edit. We start off by you know, doing a couple shots, trying to make it look really cool, cutting it up, and we go straight into our highlights. Those videos seldom, if ever, go anywhere but the team. They belong to the team, and it's for them, and it's for their entertainment the night before the game, and to help them get their mind right a little bit, and to help them visualize what we need to do the next day when we go out on the field against the next opponent. We've actually put in a lot of new technology for this season. Uh, it's very behind the scenes, but it's, it's all focused on giving our coaches iPads and the ability to use the iPads for teaching and evaluation purposes. They've also gone to doing a lot of presentation of drawings and graphics and things like that using the iPad and projecting that wirelessly in the meeting rooms. The presentation capabilities of iPad is phenomenal as a teaching tool. Now we have our whole playbook put on the iPad. I push a button, it projects up onto three screens. I can draw on it, I can highlight it. I can you know, really make a, a presentation that can highlight the things that we feel are important for the kids to really latch on to. Without video, I don't think you can get the job done. You know, everybody's now into modern technology. You know, it's made it so much easier for us now, you know, to scout our opponents, to even scout ourselves. In this day and age, our student athletes, everything's visual. The times of a teacher standing up on the, on the chalkboard and, you know, teaching someone to write in cursive or their multiplication tables, it, those, those days have passed. And, um, you, know, you know, kids learn by seeing and then by doing. I think it aids us tremendously in the presentation of information to our student athletes. The minute they got the iPads, they started moving all their playbook materials, all their installation materials, all their game plan materials over to the iPads. They started using them constantly for, for doing their meetings. So they've really adopted them very, very quickly.